both both you and Ambassador Kajo have made in a way similar arguments that even if there is a murder for plot allegation that is being investigated, it does not absolve Pannu from making uh, incendiary uh, uh, statements that openly call for violence against another country, its airline, its civilian population. Uh, and therefore, the mystery to me, and I think, Yasho, you referred to this, is why are we being somewhat muted? What is actually going on here? Why aren't we going to town? You believe that it's only a matter of time before we see more uh, on this. I want to, in the meanwhile, look at what's happening in Canada. Now, we have this very intriguing statement from uh, the Canadian police now declaring the Niger case to be separate from the one in which Indian diplomats were declared persons of interest. This is now apparently separate. I'm going to play that clip for you. Uh, you must uh, take a look. Let's play. You spoke broadly about um, the threat that, that you, in your estimation, those agents of the government India pose, and in particular, their links to the use of organized crime in very, very serious crimes uh, across Canada. The foreign affairs minister took it a step further and linked them specifically as persons of interest to the murder of Mr. Ninjar. Uh, do you draw the same link? Yeah, so, so I, I, I got to be careful with the fact that the Ninjar case is before the courts. And the, when we came out on Thanksgiving Day, it was really, and we've said this all along, there has always been a separate, separate and distinct investigation on the involvement of government of India in criminality in Canada. And that's when we came out that was specific to that and nothing to do with the Nijar case, which is before the courts. Okay, Terry, please help me here. He's basically saying from we, what I've understood. <coughs> what I've understood is that the Nijar case is separate the case in which the High Commissioner and other diplomats were declared persons of interest is separate. That is some general criminality, quote-unquote point. And the Niger case that has caused this storm for the last year is now before the courts and the Canadian police is now saying, oh, we're treating that completely separately. What's going on? What is going on is a damn good question. I think the one that's going on is that the RCMP uh, yeah. traditionally has been absolutely terrified of being caught uh, playing politics or putting uh, fighting court cases out in the open before the trial because judges in Canada are very particular about that. You are not allowed to try the case in the public forum. You must not start making people look bad outside the court and then the defense will say, look, you're making our client look bad outside the court and th this evidence isn't going to be acceptable and the judge may very well throw it out. There are very strict rules about this and I think this is what is going on here. They don't want to prejudice the Niger trial. They don't want to ruin their own case by talking about it outside court. So but, hasn't no, no, Trudeau already, but hasn't Trudeau already done that? Sorry to interrupt well, you, but hasn't yeah, Justin Trudeau yeah. already done precisely that? In, in, indeed, but I think that on, on the Indian side, just as Panoon is extremely strategic and careful and understands as a lawyer the, the, the weaknesses in Canadian law, where he can say bounty, and then you say, well, are you putting a bounty on somebody's head? That's threatening his life. Ah, but he says, I only mean that we are putting a bounty. We, want, we will pay for information so that we can bring a legal case against, mm -hmm. in this case, Amit Shah, who is the latest mm -hmm. person that they're threatening. So... Uh, Indians need to be a little bit more strategic about where they can find a, a, a way to uh, uh, go after these cases uh, w within the bounds of Canadian law. For example, uh, hate speech. Y we haven't even mentioned yet that uh, part of Panoon's vid video is that the, this, these new threats against Air India are couched in, in, in terms of as a celebration of uh, a great Sikh martyr, namely Bayan Singh, one of the assassins of Indira Gandhi in 1984. Now, mm -hmm. th that that's, wait a minute, now we're talking about celebrating violence, uh, glorifying terrorism. Now, now we're getting close to something which I can see a clever lawyer could very well make out a case in Canadian law and say, look, th th there's something where you can't say that's free speech, you're threatening somebody's life. Why aren't you doing something about that? And he's done it before. He's offered these kind of bounties before and made that excuse. Why can India not hire a lawyer 
and mm -hmm. a, a Canadian lawyer and say, look, you're not, you're not taking action where you could take action. And here and here and here, here are the Canadian laws, like, for example, hate speech. What a, 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 you, can you tell me that it's not hate speech when you glorify a murderer, Bayan Singh in this case, and the murder of Indira Gandhi, well, uh, when, when you uh, ask for a bounty, let the defense argue, if they can, that, oh, no, 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 when we say bounty, we don't mean bounty in the traditional mm -hmm. sense of putting a price on somebody's head. No, 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 we only mean a boycott. Well, in that case, if you're saying it's just an economic boycott that you're talking about, how come you also say that it's a, if you fly Air India, you'll be risking your life? Now, you will recall that that is exactly what Mr. Panoon has said in the past. So why are, yeah. it, why are the Indian side, this sort of general rage won't work? That's, that's the, what I'm saying to you, is that Indians Not may reasonably be very angry about what Panoon is able to get away with, both in the United States and in Canada. Well, that's fine. I sympathize with you, and I think it should be stopped. But how exactly? You can't just okay. wave a magic wand and say we're angry. So you should change Canadian law. You must work within what the what the law is actually. So now, be smarter. Be be smarter. Better. You might do better. You might have some success if you try. Okay. Uh, before I come to Kushal, uh, Master Kadri, you have a you have a brief uh, interjection. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, it's not for me to invoke Canadian laws. If someone is violating Canadian laws, I would imagine it's for the Canadian police. They have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And it is for the Canadian political leadership to ensure that the police takes action. The word bounty, and again, Yash will correct me if I'm wrong. The basic rule of interpretation of any statute or any statement is the common sense meaning of that word the word bounty can only be interpreted as in terms of assassination and murders money paid for that no one can claim this that it is it's meaning something else and should india tell canada that here is a man who's breaking your laws and you should take action against them or is it for the canadians themselves it is okay. canadian law that is being broken can, okay. It's not the first time that that the Khalistanis have glorified the murders of the murderers of Indira Gandhi. Correct. That has been our basic point. They seem to cover it within the ambit of free speech. Awful yeah. but lawful. Terry, that is what your guys are saying. Awful but lawful. Okay, every, every, and I can only go by what they are saying. If you are enough, saying I, that no, this is yeah. not lawful, then it's for them to take action. Yeah, yeah, sure, Terry, give me a second. Kushal's been waiting very patiently. Kushal, it's over to you. Uh, you've also been talking about, and I think last time we were talking, you, me, and Sherby were talking about, you know, a blacklist that you think hasn't been paid enough attention to getting people off a so-called blacklist. Talk about what's going on there. So in 2019, the then Chief Minister of Punjab, uh, Captain Amrinder Singh, uh, had uh, requested the Prime Minister of India, uh, Mr. Modi, there is a blacklist mostly full of Khalistanis. Hmm. And uh, I don't know what gotten into had gotten into the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Chief Minister of Punjab. They decided in their wisdom to wave off the blacklist. Now, this entire, uh, and I want to use the Punjabi word here, Siapa. This hmm. entire Siapa has started after that blacklist has been removed. In 2019, 300 odd people have been removed from the blacklist. And one of the people on that blacklist was, I know only one name because all the names don't come out, Barkha. You know, all the names don't come out. But I know for sure Malik was on the blacklist. Ripudaman Singh Malik was on that blacklist. He was not allowed to travel to India. The blacklist gets removed. Mr. Malik then writes a very nice letter praising the government of India, allowing him to travel to India. Lo and behold, in a few days or weeks after that, he is dead. Then, lo and behold, a few days after that, we have this internecine gang warfare happening where uh, I don't know how many people remember the murder of Sukhdul Singh last year in Winnipeg. 
you know it is not just a uh, nijer there was sukhdul singh who was uh, he was a 39 year old he was murdered and you know this entire thing has been unleashed after that blacklist has been uh, removed i don't know why nobody picks it up like i'm the only one shouting and screaming since last year i was like check the blacklist everything has been unleashed after the blacklist has been removed now ask yourself these people are khalisanis i repeat again and again are we naive on the indian side now that khalistan is not a pakistan project are we that naive now like how have we forgotten everything what pakistan has done to india in the 80s and the 90s during the peak of the khalistan movement and then lo and behold this blacklist is gone this man malik is praising modi the the prime minister of india he's praising the state so he's praising modi and then suddenly one by one everybody starts getting bumped off yeah and and yeah. we are so naive that we can't even ask the canadians and i am so sick and tired of pannu being an american citizen pannu is a canadian citizen too he is a dual passport holder the americans have a first amendment where is the first amendment in canada where is the first amendment in canada can everybody can, i've read canadian laws and american laws both as far as free speech is concerned because i am a free speech absolutist pannu cannot can be charged easily under canadian law but this is canada where uh, who is that santosh singh khela recently came on cbc he was the mastermind of the bombing he had a life life sentence that was reduced you have one criminal after the other being mainstreamed by canadian media and then you have the rcmp chief coming and saying i'm sorry i'm not as uh, positive as K terry when it comes to the rcmp and their capabilities and and if the canadian states excuses we cannot act on things if they are not within the purview of the law uh no when they want to act they can freeze your bank assets if you donate 25 dollars to the truckers protest isn't isn't so the color me problem, skeptical please is it but, but isn't the real problem and then i'll come to yasho briefly kushal that there is a conflation between sikh and khalistani like if you talk to most canadians they don't get the difference they they think pannu is an activist oh yaar they they think the sukhdul singh who 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 died in winnipeg now they're going to call him a sikh activist he was a gangster who came to canada in 2017 and all these people come on a student visa yaar matlab it's it's become a joke now the student visa of canada is a joke justin trudeau and his government now with jigmeet singh now jigmeet singh is out i i don't know jigmeet singh seems to remove rose petals he loves me he loves me not i don't know what jigmeet singh does on a daily basis it, it, it's it's kabuki theater over here you cannot take the canadian seriously and and this is coming from an indian who doesn't take india seriously <laughs> okay that's a lot of anger there but yasho let me pick up uh, two things one this debate around this blacklist that a few years ago in 2019 you had names that were blacklisted on entry to india wave kushal argues and a lot of others some others have been arguing that there's some connection secondly we haven't spoken about this enough the indian aviation system in the last fortnight uh, has been wrecked by bomb threats that have turned out to be a hoax but come on we are now talking about i think what more than 250 uh, such threats that have led uh, led to planes going back to bay diverting mid air uh, threats of schools shutting down now you have this list being uh, you know released um uh, it, this is very old can we can we take this out off because actually that at last count it was close to 300 flights that are counted uh yeah sure is there a connection you see between these hoax threats what pannu is saying the waiver of this blacklist i mean it's incredible see, what's going uh, on the blacklist and uh, these are two different things whenever uh, our vvips travel abroad or president of us comes here uh, you know both the agencies share uh, a lot of photographs i mean these are the lookout circulars these are the these are the kind of uh, people whose photographs uh, who who are uh, uh, threat to our vips that's that's a list and the blacklist is of course people who cannot uh, uh, enter now as a mark of reconciliation i mean uh, you know the mea or the intelligence agency and they have, they get together and as, as a mark of reconciliation if they allow some people to come in well i think it that's allowed i mean uh, every government has a right we have we have these terrorists meeting with the terrorists to lay down arms and things like that that is a kind of a you know a state policy you know which which should be accepted in fact they should be But you know praised 
there should be some gain, no? When these moves are made, there is some gain. You bring them over sometimes, to the mainstream, you bring well, them over to your side. Sometimes, I can tell you, I, can, I can't tell you very explicitly, but sometimes there are gains. There are a lot of gains, I can tell you that, with great confidence. Uh, mm -hmm. We get a lot of information too. Uh, by people who are very happy to come in. Uh, there are a lot of information here. The other thing which I want to say is that when those gentlemen talk about the gang warfare, uh, uh, you know, in Canada, I, I remember hearing um, uh, Terry would support me on this. Uh, West Vancouver Chief Keith Vaz or Heed or somebody, he said that the Lawrence Bishnoi gang uh, uh, extortion uh, yeah, led to a lot of... Uh, Indians giving money because the, uh, these people were vulnerable here. The families were never here. But similarly, Niger also went as a plumber. And a lot of the activities, criminal activities, not major, which are taking place in Punjab, are also at the behest of uh, the Canadians over there. It is also very clear, and we have all the records, that the Pakistani uh, embassy officials are meeting them all the time. So, yeah. you know, this is an ongoing game. To, to you know to tell our diplomats that they should not find out that about the anti india activities which are going on in in canada is very very strange is that snooping is that is that is that surveillance it's nonsense this is the job of our diplomats to keep our uh, country safe so i i don't see any reason how you can level a charge like this if there, there are so many of these U.S. embassy officials and Canadian embassy officials, and you know how many of them were here? What are they doing? Eating uh, biryanis? So that that's a little unfair. And the other question you asked about was the, was the bomb hoaxes we were getting. Now, obviously, this is a very very planned operation. And I was speaking on some other channel when I said this is a plan which is coming from a very very important and a targeted source. It can be done with the help of bots, you know, computer bots. I mean, and, and uh, with all the facilities over there, I had suggested that we should, in fact, uh, uh, collab collaborate with the FBI and, and ask them, uh, please tell us whether these threats are coming from your soil, VPN networks, you know, the works. So we know here the reasons uh, which are coming from within the country. Either there are passengers, or there, are, there are hoax calls, other people who are getting late, who have some enmity. But that's different. This is coming from organized source, from a foreign soil, and we need the cooperation of the uh, uh, US uh, agencies or the Canadian agencies. But we haven't had any information so far on this particular point. But don't you think we're being too muted? Before I go to Terry and we start, you know, and I'm sure Kushal, Kushal, you don't think we're being muted? I mean, why are you nodding? Which part are you nodding to Kushal? No, no, I, I, it, it, I'm not talking about the being muted part. I'm talking about wh where are we supposed to? I think the entire strategy of the government of India is completely flawed, if you ask me. The government of India seems to think that the Canadians are just going to act out of their generosity. The Canadians don't care. Either the government of India is so naive that it thinks that the infiltration of the Khalistani network in the entire Canadian body politic hmm. is so irrelevant that, oh, we can just ignore them. I don't understand what the government of India is doing. I, I keep on stating it again and again on every platform that I go to. All you have to do is write one letter with the norm, near word Khalistani in it to any political outfit or any media outfit in Canada. I say this with full responsibility. It will get leaked in one hour. And and, and are we supposed to be... I, I, I'm criticizing the government of India for trying to negotiate with Canada. Stop negotiating. Just don't deal with them. Stop trade. That's what I'm saying. You should not trade with a country that that harbors actual threats to Canadians and Indians. What is the point of all of this? I don't understand what the government of India is thinking. My criticism is towards the government of India. Canada is doing what it is doing. I, 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 I find it appalling as an Indian that airlines get threatened on a daily basis, and I'm just supposed to sit here and plead with the Canadian authorities. I don't care what the Americans do beyond the point. Let's uh, let's get real. He Gurpatwan Singh Pannu is a Canadian, and he was a lawyer of Niger, right? Wasn't he the yeah. lawyer of Niger? Yes. So why are the Canadians being left scot-free? Yeah. 